it's, it's like an artificial element from the outside. Um, yeah, it works. It really does. Um, Hi, and welcome to Inside the Studio. I'm here in Naples, Florida, actually, today with um, fabulous artist Carmelo Blandino. Thank you very much, Carmelo, for agreeing to meet yeah. with me today. It's That's taken me a little while to track you down, but uh, he here we are. Yeah. Well, I'm still under the witness protection program, <laughs> so I think I'm, so, I think I'm slowly coming so out of that. So <laughs> don't do that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, it's great to be here in your studio uh, in Naples, and it's uh, it's it it's like a visual feast in here, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Well, a lot of the you know um, what's going on right now in the studio, it's sort of like I happen to have pieces from when I started painting uh, in two thousand three, wow. right up to today, were pieces that I'm working on. So it's interesting for me to work around all of this because it's like uh, obviously Beautiful. it's a visual history of, of where I've been and where I'm going. It's good sometimes. Um, it's nice to have it around so that you can sort of can see the tra trajectory. Tra the, tra yeah. the transition. Transitions, yeah. So I, I think that's an important part of it, but not to get stuck on it either. Mm -hmm. Just keep moving, you know. You are an artist, you're a teacher, you're an educator, you're a mentor. And in fact, you, I think um, that I've gotten to know you a little bit is that you do epitomize um, everything that an artist stands for. Um, I did not know that. <laughs> and, and, and so that's great. And I have a feeling um, that you do happen to use all of your senses yeah. uh, when, you, when you show up at your canvas. Yeah. Um, why is this important to you? Um, there's, there's no reason why. It's funny, it's like if, if you show up at the canvas with just this uh, sort of directive to paint in a very, um, it becomes very linear, basically, and so we're 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 whole. You know, we we work, we live as holographs. You know? So, you never walk into a place. You have your thoughts, but your sense of smell. You know, the five senses are always there, mm -hmm. and so you're undeveloped. Most uh, of the undeveloped, time. but yeah, most of the time, uh, mm -hmm. I would say what a certain lack of awareness because we just fall into automation most mm -hmm. of the time. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the part that drives um, most of what we do without realizing again is the subconscious mind, right? So I live mostly in the subconscious. I, I actually do. I've, I've come to realize that like, by observing myself. Like, and then I realize that every once in a while and I come out and I use my five senses, right? So those five senses become sort of like the bridge, the platform from which I can use to cross over and allow people to understand my work. And then those who are more adept at the subconscious mind and the subconscious part of their own essence connect with that part of the work also. So it's almost like uh, building some sort of a pathway and I bring that into the canvas when I paint and whatever you bring to the canvas stays there. And then of course that gets transmitted afterwards to the viewer and their receptors, and their five senses and their receptors uh, will pick it up according to whatever their experience is. And, and it's, you know, a multitude of experiences and people. So every person will see, like uh, you'll have 10 different people looking at my canvas with and 10 different results. Yeah, Absolutely. It, it's, I mean, yeah, it's, it's just part of it. The same way I'm coming in with my five senses, which is particular to me. Of course. And giving that off to, uh, to other people. Of course. Is yeah. it, do you find that that's a challenge for people to understand that you know, with uh, I sort think of on a, on a, you're saying it's a subconscious experience, yeah. but um, ultimately it will translate into a conscious experience. Right. Do you find that it's a challenge for your viewers to, to really No, grasp because that? everybody sort of meets the painting of where they're at. So wh whatever f level of development you have, it's there. Um, the, the part that is underlying and the drive, the motivation that I have, um, that connects with people, although they don't always know how to verbalize it. Correct. Uh, so so they'll, they'll be, oh my God, I'm, I'm moved by this painting. I don't quite know why. And, and they'll be honest about it. But something about it is getting to me. And I said, just leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Like, don't try and decipher it or explain it. Or if you turn it into an intellectual thing, mm -hmm. a lot of times, then you're, you're breaking down the painting into such um, different forms of sort of like um, subjective matter that you lose the, the essence of the painting itself. You know, I've, I've, I would never overanalyze a uh, painting. I would just really go with what pops in my heart first and say, that's why I like it. Simple enough. Walk away. Walk away. Yeah, walk away. Have you always been a spiritual kind of a guy? Um, uh, I, I, I think we're all spiritual kind of guys and girls, and I think we're all that way. 
Uh, I just think that some people develop those tools more than others um, for whatever reason in their lives. Uh, I think by the time we all end up uh, dying at some point, even in the last second of our breath, we become spiritual. <laughs> so <laughs> you can choose to live your, you know, the length of your life that way or the last two seconds, entirely up to you. Uh, but it's, it's not something that you walk away from, it's what you come in with. And what gets layered on top of that are the five senses, and, and that is uh, an intellectual process. Uh, but the, the true nature of uh, the personal reality of man, and, and I mean man, when I say man is mankind. Of course, of course. Um, is uh, we're all essences, we're all, we're all spirit beings, mm -hmm. basically. And, and, and then how we navigate ourselves throughout the world is the identity that we develop. Mm -hmm. And based on that identity, then you become Carmelo Buendino or Joanne, right. But you choose, right? Correct. And, um, and then as you go along, you, you, you weigh those things and you may have crises in life and you might say, well, I gotta get rid of this part of my identity because I can't move forward anymore. Mm -hmm. But the spirit is always there. That the spirit never, is always never, there. never, 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 never gets touched. That's that's the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. So, the nature of my work, and, and one of the reasons why I chose nature is because I, nature is the closest thing that we have to spirit. It's the closest, and it's when that's why when you go for a walk, you're, you're like, oh, I'm so relaxed. I'm so in touch with God. I'm so in touch with all that is the mm -hmm. essence of being, mm -hmm. because there isn't the layering of the sort of the pretense of the uh, of the intellect and the pretense of the of the personality and, and the myriad of personalities that, that get layered on top of that nature is nature and 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 spirit is spirit and so it's the closest that we have to that um, I, I i really like that you've explained it that way because in essence what you're saying is art can be complicated but it can also be simplistic in many respects it's complicated when you turn it into a product Art becomes very, very complicated when you remove the, um, the intention of the inertia of the expression, okay? And then you start to, look, for example, and, and one of the things is I never name the flowers that I'm painting. People ask me what type of flower is it? I say, it's a flower, okay? Well, I think it's a peony. I go, good for you, because that's what it is for you. Because as soon as you, you put the term right to it, on. then you've taken it out of the context right of on. the emotional and, and you've, you've labeled it as, a, as an intellect, right? right? And that starts to get complicated because then it's like, oh, what kind of peony? Mm -hmm. And <laughs> is it a hybrid? And, <laughs> oh, and, Lord. Right. And where was it done? And where did you get the reference? Yeah. Or all of that is so mm -hmm. not necessary mm -hmm. uh, unless you're, you know, building some form of a story. The simplicity of the story that we live as humans is, is basic, I love, mm -hmm. I'm joyful, mm -hmm. and I'm happy. Mm -hmm. It's a choice. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. The other part of the simplicity is, I live in fear, I live in anger, and I live in guilt. Mm -hmm. So those are the only two choices you ever have. Mm -hmm. And whatever you choose of those two, you can intellectualize them. Mm -hmm. That's it, and it gets really complicated mm -hmm. after that. Mm -hmm. And it rules the world. Yeah. Um, how would you describe your genre? Um, hmm. um, you know, um, when I was looking at art and studying and trying to figure out the movements in art, um, there were movements. Um, my genre, I would say, just basically a botanical, um, nature-loving artist. I, I can't even describe it honestly. Because it's, like, it's quite different. And we're <laughs> going to take a little wander around, and we're going to we're going to we're going to see that in your work that mm -hmm. there isn't w one thing. Um, that that you would hang a label on and mm, say no. uh, it, it's Carmelo Blandino. However, that being said, in my opinion, um, I think it is important to find. I don't want to say a label, but is it? It is. It is important, and I think, in essence, you've worked very hard at developing your brand, in a sense. Yeah. The, it, I, look, I, I think I, I, I started, I knew very early on I was going to be an artist and I, I probably put over four years in developing the perfection of handling the paints. Yeah. I put that time in there. Mm -hmm. The rest now is all about, um, along with that was the expression, but now all that has been put aside and it's just simply the expression. And so whatever form it comes out in, whether it has to be, if I have something to say and the painting needs to be rendered in a more realistic manner, then I kick in with that. 
if it needs to be more abstract because it lends itself to the narrative, then I kick in with that. So if I narrow my scope down to this very particular one way, I'm, I'm limiting myself and I'm Agreed. doing myself a disservice. You Agreed. See? But I, th I think underlying all of that, the one consistency that I had all the time is because of um, sort of the nature of my background, having grown up seeing Caravaggio's and Baroque art and heavily influenced by French uh, 17th century art, just beautiful, uh, David and Hank. I, I noticed that the underlying baseline uh, was an absolute love and admiration for um, the basics, which is like composition and color and perspectives. And But once you take care of that, you're free. Like you you're are free. completely free. Yes, you are. And so that was that was always the uh, the thing that uh, I always, uh, what would I label it? I would say it's contemporary because I'm still alive. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's it, it, today's time. I would I would probably say that it's um, it's a hard thing to nail down. I mean, we're moving so fast that movements don't even last a year or two anymore. Like, I mean, within the last five years, we went from something that we would call contemporary art, and now that's almost being forgotten. We're moving into NFTs, and that's a whole new realm. It's and so, what world. kind of art? Do you, well, I do NFTs. That's that's a whole new realm. You see, it's it's a it's a whole new. It's a yeah. whole new world it's moving at lightning world. speed. Yeah. Um, I, I would ask you this question, and, and maybe you um, are not able to uh, freely answer it, but um, for a successful artist um, over time, you, you do have to be strategic in your plan about mm -hmm. how you're going to uh, show yourself to the world, and, and as every artist wants to do, to leave their artistic legacy. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, has it been quite that um, conceived and well developed in your mind, or has it just been a, a natural progression that you have, uh, that things have crossed your path and you've leapt on them and gone forward? Uh, good question. I think it's been a mix of both. Um, it sort of starts off with the intention of having to leave a legacy. And then as you produce the work and you set a certain standard of, uh, I would have, to, I hate to use the word quality, but a certain level of uh, structure, I guess, or, you know, like to the work, people come into the foray to help you move it along, mm -hmm. okay? Um, but it all begins with the work mm -hmm. and it ends with the work because I, when you leave and I'm not producing the work anymore, the legacy is left behind. So that still continues. Right. And so if you, if you have work that is of, of value in terms of to be seen and recognized, not, not monetary value, Correct. the experience of being able to see it, then you're really leaving a legacy behind. And if I can just segue a little bit into this, one of the biggest teachers that I ever had regarding this, I'm, I'm self-taught. Mm -hmm. So I would always go to museums all the time mm -hmm. and learn from what was in there. And I remember on Sundays in New York were always the day that I would go to the Metropolitan, okay? And I would spend time there mostly in front of the Van Goghs, right? And so Van Gogh was my teacher. And I, I, I noticed that in the other rooms around the Van Gogh, there was the Caravaggio, Rembrandt was there, and then you sort of jump right into the, into the Impressionist room. There were a few people there, but the Van Gogh room was packed, 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 packed with people. And they would all line up to take a photograph of, you know, of the painting or in front, the selfie, something was happening. And I looked at that and I said, what is it, what was so special about the Van Goghs? Well, it was the legacy that he left behind. That was the actual thing. It wasn't about the million dollar value behind the mm -hmm. painting, but because these paintings were small, but it was the legacy. The man died, I think he was like 34, mm -hmm. very young. Mm -hmm. Never but, saw two paintings in his life. Right. But the resonance mm -hmm. of those paintings influenced millions and millions of people. Certainly. You didn't have to resell them again. But they, that's, that's what I mean by re legacy. That to me is a true legacy. It's like it surpasses time. It, it goes beyond. And that, there's a painting, case in point, where the subconscious is very prevalent in there. You see? Mm -hmm. Technique is there. You look mm -hmm. at the technique and it's swooshed paint mm -hmm. and it's sloppy and it's pushed this way and that way. You get that. But then once you see that, you remove that, you're like, wow, the, the subconscious aspect is talking to me because people stand in front of those paintings and you can see their hearts just open. And, and that's, how, that's how art is of value. That's of how it course, changes people. Very responsive. <clears throat> and of course, you know, had it not been for the foresight of his sister-in-law, right. 
um, he would have not created a, a, a legacy, right. and he would have faded off into obscurity and never, right. never to be heard of. Right. No, you absolutely again. need you absolutely need um, <laughs> artists. We get uh, tunnel vision. We're in our studio. We work. We work. We work. You know, today's a little different. Um, we work differently with the advent of social media, but uh, the addition of all of that, I think it's most of, mostly in a, a distraction. But to work very tight with somebody that really understands putting the work out there as a legacy, as opposed to putting it out there for a show of numbers in terms of approval and ratings and, and likes. That's the difference that we were facing right now with our, as artists. And, and uh, you know, artists in general tend to have uh, either uh, broken egos or incredibly huge egos, you know. Both demand a lot of applause, <laughs> okay. It's a problem, it really is a problem because it takes you away from the, from the uh, the, the the importance of the work itself. You see, the, the work is, is is created in, as a means of communication that yep. but that surpasses time. Yeah. Um, and you know that being said, if the whole world goes goes boom, okay, we all did our part, we're done, right? But if it doesn't go boom, um, then that keeps going and on and on and on. Well, I don't yeah. even think I mentioned that you are a Canadian guy from Montreal. I'm kind of like a Canadian guy from Montreal. Right. Yeah. Uh, the origins were uh, the origins were set. I was born in Germany, okay, and then we went back to Sicily for a short time. We're Sicilian. Mm -hmm. uh, my father was there working with my mom. Uh, I was born there. Went back to Sicily. Long story. Picked up my brother again in Sicily, and we all emigrated to Canada, and Montreal, in '67. So there was a big, you know, bunch of Italians coming in. Uh, so that was fun. Uh, growing up in Montreal, I uh, you know learned three languages, including mine, four. Uh, a multi-ethnic, just beautiful city of you know cold and warm and contrasts, and uh, and yet at the same time full integration of so many different people. Uh, raised in neighborhoods where we spoke only Italian, mm -hmm. so I was able to keep my my heritage beautiful. and my language. Yeah. Beautiful. So that was great, and then learning uh, French Canadian uh, and that whole culture and English mm -hmm. Canadian, and mm -hmm. yeah, no, it was it was just really really, um, you know, it, it was it, it, we talk about senses like my senses were on I was on sensory overload overload with all I of that. I do believe. Yeah. That you have the heart of an Italian. An right? Italian, absolutely. You know. Uh, <laughs> Without a doubt, when I was in Canada, people would say, you're Canadian, eh? And I would say, no, but you say, eh, all the time. I said, because Italians, we say, eh. <laughs> and so it's not because I'm Canadian. But I, I could never um, fully integrate uh, and, and, and let go of the, the Italian culture. And, and my brother and I, we were sent to Sicily very often to stay with my grandmother and my nice. aunts there and spend time. So nice. we learned the language. We made friends. It was very difficult to pull away from that. Sure. Um, so, and to this day, I, I have, you know, I'm now in America, and, and that's part of my culture and my background. Mm -hmm. It's not what I completely identify with, um, but it's there. It's, it's there. definitely there. Yeah, well, Especially yeah. when you spend uh, a lot of time here, which you have done since 2005. Since 2005, I, uh, I always had, a, um, I always had the, the idea that um, I wanted to be able to live in the United States um, for the sole reason that it would give me the opportunity to be able to expand my work and reach a, a broader audience. Mm -hmm. The United States always seemed to be much more open and willing to that. Canada uh, was also, I mean, Canadians are very culturally cultivated and, and they know mm -hmm. their stuff mm -hmm. very well. And, uh, but obviously the, the avenues of being able to make the work move, uh, I, I saw that here. Uh, critical component and I'm sure many Canadian artists feel that way. Mm -hmm. um, and you've had, uh, you've had uh, work in galleries in New York and mm -hmm. in, uh, in Europe. Yeah. Uh, and Stockholm. In, in yeah. Stockholm and yeah. of course in Toronto as mm -hmm. well. Yeah. Um, so let's move over to um, your work over here because there is an aspect of your practice which I would like to speak to, uh, to viewers about. Um, sure, sure. Um, well look, you know, this is probably my most recent piece right now and um, the evolution of the, the paintings have, have been when I started in Canada, I was a Canadian landscape artist, and I was, uh, in order to differentiate myself also, I worked in encaustic paint. Ah. So, so huh. there were about only three people in Canada at the time working in encaustic, really? and one of them was um, in Toronto. Oh, why does his name escape me now? But um, brilliant artist, uh, whom I, uh, Tony Sherman. Oh, Tony Sherman. Tony Sherman. 
mm. whom I referenced, and I, I learned how to paint by what, looking at his paintings. I would travel to Toronto, University of Toronto, we had a show at the time on uh, Napoleon. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And so I, I looked at those paintings and I studied them. And so I started painting an encaustic, the landscapes. But the point was that for me, the landscapes were, um, again, it was like a, a roadmap uh, towards what I always called the light, right? Because there needs to be light for the landscape to show up. Mm -hmm. So the, the, it was the same light that I was searching for within myself. And, and mm -hmm. so those landscapes were produced in that way. There would always be some shroud of darkness and then there'd be like a little mm -hmm. speck of so light. Those paintings are like that. Right, and, and so, so I would look at those, um, th my own paintings also, and looking at uh, paintings from the Baroque and from 17th century Fran uh, French, and I would see that um, they were always obsessed with having to capture the light. But the light was obviously a metaphor for what we carry within. So you asked me about, was I always spiritual? It was just a natural thing to do, to mm -hmm. search that. Mm -hmm. So through that, from darkness to, to light and more light, there started to come in more and more color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then mov moving more forward with that, the, um, rather than showing the, the big scope of the landscape, I started to get closer and closer and closer and started to focus on the flowers. And rather than paint small flowers, I just blew them up to gigantic proportions so that they you could really feel like the impact of all, of all of these flowers when you hang them in the room. That was the whole idea. I think one of the words that you used uh, somewhere is combustible. Yeah, possibly, yeah. Right, yeah. Uh, and, and, and yeah. There, there is that burst yeah. and forth, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so you are, you are um, uh, a teacher. You do mm -hmm. teach yeah. students. Yeah. Um, what the heck is your teaching style like? I, I think uh, <laughs> it was interesting. It was pretty severe when I was teaching at Dawson College in mm -hmm. Montreal. There was an illustration program, so the students had to go through three years, and at the end of it, it was a vocation, so we had to land them a job. So it was like, let's go, let's go, let's go. And at the time, I was also in advertising, so it was pretty, I was pretty strict on uh, the methodology. Today, I'm, I'm still strict with the methodology, but it's about continuing to always work and working through the problems and the sort of roadblocks that you end up getting to in, in, your, in your work. And then to develop a sense of awareness of what exactly it is that you're doing and to not lie to yourself. That was, that was the biggest thing. It's like, yes, you can paint a pretty picture, but again, does it have that lasting resonance? Because if it doesn't, let's go, let's go after that. You Good know, you. let's go Good after that. Good for you. Good for you. And so, um, and in terms of how I teach, um, because you know, I've, I've had a myriad of students and sure. every single one is different. I actually meet them where they're at and I don't teach them techniques. I simply remove the blockages that are there that are impeding them from seeing. And because some person might just be absolutely amazing in the abstraction, but they're trying to paint realistic mm -hmm. because somebody told them that. Mm -hmm. I said, no, you, if you're abs an abstract painter, let's, that's go, find, let's sure. go find that out. Right. And so I remove all those blockages and that's, that's the real work. That really becomes the real work and I've learned that through my, through my own exercise. Um, and it could be growing. I mean, a lot of times if, if you're true to what you're doing, it, could be devastating, but you know, pick yourself up and grueling but gratifying. Gratifying. It's, it's yeah. There's this, there's a sense of gratification at the end of all of it, but um, yeah. And yeah, every, yeah. every now and again, you I'm sure you come across a, a star student that uh, oh, I've that had just astounds you. I've had many star mm -hmm. students who have gone on to have successful careers, and awesome. uh, and you can see it. You can you can really see it. It's like they're they're just hungry for it. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's beautiful. Um, this is an interesting question. Okay. <laughs> what advice do you wish you would have given yourself uh, as a young artist years ago? Uh, let's see, that's a good one. What advice do I have given myself? Um, hmm. You know, I, I always wanted to go to school because uh, I, I never went to uh, an art school. So I, I think I can't even go there anymore. I, everything has worked out exactly the way it would have. Yeah, I think. Um, but if you project back thirty years ago. Oh hell! I, th I think probably it would have been the the biggest transition was when from when I, w I became an illustrator, became a fine artist. I sort of taught myself that being a, an illustrator would stand the test of time, and it didn't because after twelve years of doing that, I had to close the door on that. So probably just always follow your heart. Because you you know you'll never you'll never go wrong with it, and it's it's not like a whimsical thing. It's like you have an impetus to do something, and then if you allow the ideas of others to come in, they'll direct you in a certain course. 
And I, I think probably, I could have probably saved 12 years, you know. Life is what it is. <laughs> yeah, life is what it is. It's I'm here, I'm doing my thing, I'm happy. I, I wouldn't even recognize that as being lost, you know. But, you know, you learn from it. So. Well, you know, for a lot of uh, y younger artists that are um, trying to figure things out, mm -hmm. and um, it's, I think it's easy to say, follow your heart um, and things will happen. But... Um, I think there is an element of truth to that, actually. Yeah, listen, I was, I remember sitting in college and, you know, everybody's telling me I should be an accountant. So I'm like, all right, let's give this thing a try because everybody else is saying, meanwhile, I'm drawing like crazy. I've been drawing since I was 10, but I'm going to go into accounting because that's, so I'm sitting in calculus and I kid you not, it took 20 minutes and my brain started to melt. And I'm looking at this, I'm like, I just got up and the teacher's like, where are you going? I go, I'm switching programs. <laughs> I'm out of here. Where are you going? I'm going into creative arts. And I did it. And, and, and that's, that was the thing. It's like, that's following your heart. That was one of those moments where I, I looked around and I said, they're going to think I'm crazy. I'm just getting up. And when I left the illustration, they're going to think I'm crazy. But I'm closing down this business. I'm going to start another one. And that's what I did. Were your parents supportive of you pursuing, yes, pursuing they, your dream? Yes, they didn't understand it, but they, they did understand uh, pursuing the dream. That's, that's okay, for good. them, that's what they aligned themselves oh, good, with. They good, said, good. And my father sat down with me one day, he said, this thing you call art, I don't really understand it. I go, but if it makes you happy and, you know, and it's something that you can do and you do it well, then do it. You know? I, there was a bit of Catholic guilt in there and some, you know, a bit of an Italian threat, a Sicilian <laughs> threat. He says, don't come home if you want to do it right. <laughs> and, so, and, and are they both around today? My, my dad passed and uh, my mom is still around. And, uh, you know, I learned a lot from them because my, my dad was like a yoga teacher for me in the sense of like doing one thing over and over and doing it right. And because that's all he knew. He knew one thing and he mm -hmm. found his joy in that. Mm -hmm. And on Sundays when he would not be working, he would drive me around in Montreal and he'd take me to all the places where he has worked because he was a manual laborer. He mm -hmm. would do cement work and he'd mm -hmm. say, see, I worked on that house and I worked on that house. And he mm. took pride. Of course. And so that was like a, his showcase. The actual city where he worked was the showcase. So I understood also what it means, again, leaving something behind and being proud of what you're doing. It, it could be the most minuscule thing in the world, but if it makes a world of difference to you, it has a lot of value, you Absolutely. know. So I, I learned that definitely from them. Will you be uh, starting up your classes again? Are you, what's the plan? Yeah, the plan with the classes is, I used to give classes in my workshop here in my studio for people in Naples or whoever would want to travel and come and see me for a few months, uh, not all the time. But uh, no, I've decided to stop that. I've reclaimed my studio 100% and now I will travel to whoever wants to organize a class, whether it be Toronto, Baltimore, mm. California, I'll go there instead. Uh, Italy, in Luca, I give classes over there, the workshops, which mm. are a lot of fun. And now I offer online uh, mentoring, uh, just one day of the week on a Monday, and I just set up the, the hours. It's, it's in an effort to continue that practice. I think it's important to give back uh, what you know. And then the rest of the time is really spent for my studio and in my life, you know, I, otherwise, you know. What's up next in terms of any shows? Anything? I do. I have, uh, I have a, a show coming up at FGCU, Florida Gulf Coast University. We're working on putting together, um, it's, it's going to be a new show. It's a, a new experience with my work, something I've never done. Mm. Uh, and it's a combination of pop pop art and uh, Baroque uh, romanticism mm. um, put together, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's a little touchy, but I'll pull it off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that's what's going on. The rest is just really focus hard on my work and build a beautiful array of new works that um, it's been a while since I've really put together like a large uh, body. Yeah, body of work like that. And then last year uh, I had the show at the Naples Botanical Garden, which I absolutely loved. and. Um, that just catapulted me into a whole new uh, awesome. area also. And, and that's what I like about these shows is that when you, it, you know, it's good to be given a show from my experience. Um, you, you're given a show and, and if you just produce the thing you've always been doing in your studio, it's good, but it's kind of like, you know, every time I do a piece, I look at it and I say, this is good, but can I, how about we push the next one like five, 10% more? Awesome. How about we keep pushing and pushing awesome. and pushing all the time? Awesome. You know, awesome. Well, at a certain point, you're just so far away from where you started that, you know, that's how your language and narrative develops. 
Yep. Uh, and so shows do that for me, whether they be gallery exhibitions or museum exhibitions. Uh, I've done a museum exhibition, two of them, uh, where I went completely off from what I do with the colorful stuff, and I just went full on like black and white and two colors. And, and that w there was a reason to that whole thing, but it brought that up, and it was well received, you see. Mm -hmm. So it's not to be afraid of it, not to get stuck in well, just this it. one that's way. Or taking risk. Anyway, Carmelo, thank you hmm. very, very Absolutely. much. Absolutely, no, thank you. It's for been a times, pleasure. For time spent uh, today, and uh, I certainly wish you every success yeah. uh, tomorrow and always. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you. As you go forward, and for those folks that maybe. Uh, uh, finding themselves down in southwest Florida, in Naples in particular, I hope that uh, you have a chance to tag this guy. He's he, he's a bit uh, he's a bit tough, but uh, anyway, um, I'm a little tough to find. Is it? Tough yeah. to find, but anyway, I do wish you the best. Yeah, and same to you, and thank you. I, I appreciate the work that you're doing to help other others and artists. And thank you so much. It's, it's, it's good work. It's thank important. you so much. So, we love yeah. what we do. Oh, it shows. Thank you. So we are uh, looking at a really, really spectacular painting here. Of course, it is, it is floral, but it's, uh, let's use that word one more time. It's combustible florals. It's, uh, it, is, it actually is leaping off the canvas mm -hmm. in many respects, yeah. right? Yeah. So what's going on here? Uh, what, what were you thinking about when you were doing this piece? Yeah, yeah it's, it's exactly that. It's, it's, I, wanted, I always want the flower to, to speak for itself when, uh, I mean, Look, I could be painting these very like poised bouquets sure. on the table, like what we're used to seeing. But when you start to enlarge them to sizes that are oversized, I mean, on, on, honestly, a peony is about this big, but when mm -hmm. you're going in five, six times the size, it will take up space in the room and, and it will have an impact. It will change the entire atmosphere of the room. And that's always been the sort of like the, the end result that I was seeking with, with these flowers because they're, they're, they're you know, I, when you look at flowers and you walk through a garden, they affect you in, in a gigantic they way. They certainly do. Okay, they're small little things, yep. but they affect yep. you in a big they way. They certainly do. And so that resonance is basically what I'm doing here on the canvas. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and I'm just continuing, you know, what I've been feeling all the time from looking at these other, other, other paintings from other artists. Uh, and what you'll notice also is like there's a lot of I started to bring in some of the line work, right, like right. some of the line work that you see here. Yep. And those are that's the abstract elements of, of the bouquet itself. Now, mm -hmm. love it. Yeah, like we'll look at a bouquet and we'll say, oh, that's a bouquet of flowers. But there is so much abstraction happening in there that our central nervous system just organizes it so that we have a comprehensive system. Right. But really, if you look at it, everything is abstract. Right. So those are some of the reminders of the going back and forth between the mind and the subconscious there mind. Go. Yeah, and there it's, go. They, they, go, they go right in there, you know. Wow. So that's, that's an important element. Um, and then of course the composition, which is, is a big reference to Baroque art. Uh, and oh, this is beautiful. Thank oh. you, yeah, yeah, I love those, the, the, the parrot uh, oh, that's tulips. So, yeah. so, so beautiful. And, 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 it's, and you know, the, the shapes itself, like I, I'm influenced by a lot of Japanese and, and Asian art uh, you can see some of it over there and the other part is um, the description of the actual canvas for me is um, rather than continuing to draw figurative each one of these flowers has its own personality and they're talking to each other so it's like you're walking in on a conversation oh, right? I, I yeah. love that so that's, that's such well, that's, a beautiful yeah, way of yeah. expressing this piece that's what you're looking at oh you my see? god that's so, just so, gorgeous i mean if you think about it if you had like we have one two three four five six seven eight nine like 12 people in a room talking there's a conversation going on it's going to demand a lot of attention and that's that's what's going on in the painting and some people will be speaking this language some people will be speaking this language but it's all coherent like it's all gets organized in that way you need you to write that down i Who's hope got that's the time a, that's a, no that's a beautiful <laughs> beautiful narrative yeah sure. that's really how i see it and the colors i mean um yeah, um, well yeah interestingly enough uh, I, i'm learning to play guitar my teacher the other day is like you know, you gotta look at notes sort of like their color. I said, well, you know, I look at color like their notes. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we're speaking the same language and Love that's it. that's exactly what it is. Everything is a harmony. Love it. And you, you have the, the, the bright colors up against the dark colors to create contrast. Love and it. Love it. Love yeah, it. it's Love it's it. it's Love symphonic it. in many ways. I mean this is like putting together a symphonic uh, um, um, orchestration and, yeah. and that's that's what comes out on the on the canvas. And then 
Right below here, oh, yeah. this this is the the remnants of a lot of the paintings that I work with, and I mm. take I take some of these, and I, I like interior design and I like objects, and uh, I'm you know I just love having beautiful things around the house, and yep. and sometimes I like to deconstruct things, and this is just a piece that's continuously fun. working, and so fun. as I keep moving into it, I you know I had the whole thing reupholstered, and I keep. Just putting paint on it and we'll see where it, where it ends up it's uh, just an ongoing <laughs> project uh, I've done a few so far but it's good to have these in the studio as reminders that this isn't the only thing you should be doing like just like keep moving around keep moving. stay focused at the same time because it's all when you put the whole thing together in the end it, it all makes but this sense works. This yeah, is, it all this works this is a beautiful little vignette here yeah right? that's exactly it that's a good way of describing it's, it's, it it's, it's gorgeous a, it's a anyway vignette. It's so yeah. all good. All right.